thank God that uh, I don't know if anybody can hear me, but we've been blessed with uh, beautiful microphone someone brought us. I appreciate you all. <clears throat> Cherish. Hi, that's my youngest daughter on here this evening. Thank God for her. Amen. Thank God for her. Love you. Can't hear anything? Hmm. Oh, it's too bad. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, so let's thank God for the very day that we live in here now. Thank God that he uh, blessed us to see this day. God bless you, dearie. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at the book of Joel. I'm just going to read it today. Joel 1, the word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Penuel. When you see the, when you see E-L at the back of a name, E-L means God-like. When you see anything that has E-L, E-L means God-like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so thank God my lovely wife made some more delicious coffee. Uh, hot too. Yeah, so yes, that's reading. Book of Joel. Hear this, yo man, and give ear all the inhabitants of the land. Have this been in your days, or even in the days? Tell your children of it, and let your children and tell their children and their children another generation. So you would tell this and tell this to all your generation, and even to you all that's not married yet. God gonna bless you with some children. Cause don't give up. Tell with Brother Kelly. That's easy for you to say. Andrea, how you doing? Tell your children's children's children. Oh, not over the camera. Come on, camera. Look at a fella here. Let me put this off for you. Hold on, here we have now. All right, maybe that'll work right there. Okay. So I want to tell the one that brought me this beautiful speaker. We haven't hooked it up yet. But we will, we will hook it up and place it to where it could be used. Very nice, very nice camera. I mean, I mean, a mic. All right, that's my bad. Come on, fingers. All right, here we go. Put this back in here. So, all right, put that back in there. Let that settle. So, children's children, and I mean, tell all of them. You were about to kill, and got no children yet. Keep believing God, you will. Amen. He hadn't forgotten you. He hadn't. My wife makes the good, the coffee, don't you know? Praise God. Joel 4. Joel 1, verse 4. If you got your Bibles out, so happy my daughter Cherish is on with me. So proud of her. Uh -huh. That which the palmer worm 
have left, have the locusts eaten, and that which the locusts have left, have the palmer worm eaten. And that which the canker worm have left, have the caterpillar eaten. So it is saying if something start, yep, that's my little baby. She grown, but she's still my, my little girl. So what it's saying, what one thing starts eating at your stuff and he don't eat it all. The, the pummel worm, the pummel worm start eating at your stuff and he don't eat it all. So he leaves some behind and then the locusts, man, them locusts are bad, boy. They're really bad. It'd be like billions of them. I mean, billions. And in spite of all of those billions eating up all the corn and the weed and all that, they don't eat. It, they don't eat it all. They don't eat it all. So they leave some. And that was the locusts leave behind. The canker worm eats. Canker. There used to be a thing called a canker spoon. Canker spoon. The canker spoon is something that we used to say you don't want to eat with that canker spoon. A canker spoon smells bad. It has a really, a really bad smell to it. it smells real bad. And someone will get that out of their to draw where the silverware is, and you can have you're gonna have as many as twenty five different spoons, knives, and forks in your your silverware draw, and you pull that one out and you start smelling it. Mmm, stinks. That metal canker canker stinks. So imagine you got a lot of, uh, Thomas, how you doing? You got a lot of worms and they stink and, and, and they surround you. You can't do nothing about it. And certain times of the year, a lot of these, these bugs will come out and stink. But they leave. And when they leave, they leave some left over for the caterpillar. So you got the palmer worm, locust, canker worm who stinks, he stinks. And caterpillar, all of them eating eating at your, 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 your crops. So now this farmer here says, oh, oh my. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your auntie. We've been praying for her a long time. Sorry about that, really. So this guy said, every time I plant something, every time it seems like something's gonna grow Something happens to mess it up. Oh, I'm talking to somebody out there. Sometimes it seems like every time you get ready to get a big harvest, like this guy here, says, oh God, every time I get ready to get a good harvest, something happens to eat it up. But it ain't over. It's not. Not the matter in Palmer, the canker worm. Because one thing about the caterpillar, the 
One thing about a caterpillar, we're in the book of Job, not Job, Joel. The book of J-O-E-L, the first chapter of Joel. We're talking about the locust, the palmer worm, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar. Trey, how you doing? All of those things will attack, but it's not over. Now, you notice the last one in this list, because he's a little frustrated. The last one in this list is a caterpillar. Good to see you on here, Trey. Good to see you. The caterpillar. Now, what does a caterpillar do? What does a caterpillar do? Thank you so much. Can't pronounce your name, but I S K A N D A R O V. So it sounds like Russian. Thank you, Tashia Rogers. Thank you. Yeah, these these character things that God showed me. I didn't go to no art school. God just showed me how to draw and color in. He showed me how to draw the picture of my mom. Um, anoint me with anointing oil. Got about 200 drawings in here of different things. And some nice people have sent me coloring. They sent me paper to draw with. Isn't that nice? Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Draw with. Isn't that a blessing? I guess, thank God for you. Come on, camera. We'll put a belt here. Everybody that can. Sent me art supplies and all kinds of different things. Thank you. So, it's hard to come. See, and with the caterpillar, now with the caterpillar, caterpillar, he, he like, um, Just draw a caterpillar for you. So you, so the caterpillar uh, <laughs> it's amazing. This is amazing. Caterpillar. Got a lot of legs. Mm -hmm. So he goes. You see, I put a little color on there so you can see the caterpillar a little better. So he goes and He goes and gets inside of a cocoon. Mm -hmm. He goes inside of a cocoon. And he ain't the prettiest thing in the world. He low down on the ground. Okay, he down on the ground, walking around on the ground pretty much. He really ain't that pretty. But something happens to him. Mm -hmm. So he goes and he, he goes and he, it gets into a cocoon. Right? He goes and he gets inside of a cocoon. But he makes he makes himself. He goes and he gets into a cocoon. 
Yeah, he goes and he gets in it. He spends, he spends his own material. Mm -hmm. Spend his own material. Goes in, goes inside of a cocoon. Now that's the point I'm bringing here. Okay, what happened to you? All right, anyway. He goes in there. He gets inside, hangs. Hangs from a, a tree. Jay, how you doing? That's a good question. I, I'll answer that one. <laughs> he goes in and and uh, yeah, he hangs from a tree by a little branch. Goes in there. Now. Now this how this how it goes in there. Caterpillar go in there like this. It is amazing. While he's inside of the cocoon, hanging upside down from a tree branch, something is happening. Something is happening to him. Now. Now watch this, watch this now. Some of you all, you're in a cocoon. Oh, you getting ready to see this, Jay. Inside of a cocoon, being worked on, metamorphosis, getting ready to be turned into something else. Oh my goodness. You're inside a cocoon wondering what's going on, why stuff ain't happening. It's a good thing you 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 went in there like this, whole lot of legs, all kinds of different sections to you. You're in there. Some of y'all in the cocoon right now. You're in there right now, and wondering why certain things not happening. It's not a bad thing. It's not. You're in a cocoon, and inside of that cocoon, you're being reshaped and redeveloped. For something that's going to take wings and fly. Oh, I wish I could get about three amens. You are going to fly. Can't fly like this. Wait a minute. How you, gonna, how you gonna fly? How? How is he going to fly? You gotta go through something. Oh, I can't get no. I, I, I check and find an amen. Redeem. I got an amen there. You're in a cocoon. You have to get out. Thank you, sweet. Thank you, Dorothy, baby. Cheers. God is doing something with you inside of that cocoon. Oh, I can. You got to be another amen out there. Hey, John Mark, how you doing? Some people inside of the cocoon being developed. They're being developed inside of that cocoon, hanging from that little stem. Hanging from that little stem. Went and climbed up the tree and got on that branch and started spinning. Oh, glory. Start spinning that cocoon. And some of y'all, you have... You have spin or spun. Now you're inside of that being developed. You're in there being developed. Oh, I can't wait till I can find him. He's got to be another amen out there somewhere, Kenneth. 
if it's if it's a million people listening to me, and someday it will be half of you all are inside of a cocoon being developed to fly into places financially, spiritually, emotionally, marriage-wise, children. You ain't gonna be broke. See, the reason why you're dealing with a financial problem is because you're walking down on the ground, but God is watching you and God invested. He invested something inside of that cocoon. There's a big investment in here. And you notice, you notice, Monica, how you doing? You notice, Monica, only one caterpillar goes inside and makes a cocoon. He don't bring a whole lot of people in there with him. Oh, let me see. I, I think I'm, I think I'm running out of amens here, Monica, but thank you so much. God don't want you bringing everybody into that small space with you. They're air suckers, the stealers. They'll suck all the air out there for you. Oh, my goodness. He don't want... You can't... Be, you cannot bring everybody in that cocoon with you. You can't. You shouldn't. Well, Brother Kelly. Uh-uh, Brother Kelly, nothing. No, 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 no. No, you should not bring everybody into the cocoon with you because you're being developed into something. You're being developed into something. Mm hmm God's cutting stuff. <laughs> he cutting. He look at here. Joel. Book of Joel. Follow me here. Book of Joel. Not Joel. Joel. J-O-E-L. L mean godlike. Book of Joel. Chapter 1, verse 5. Right. Awake. 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 Some people are just sleeping in life. Wake, wake up, wake up, wake up. You drunkards and weak. God said, "Get up! You've been drinking on everything. You can't take alcohol in the cocoon with you. You ain't see one butterfly." or moth flying drunk. Wake up from that. And weep. What are you weeping for? Because God said weep. See, weeping, it says, weeping, man endure for a night, but well, what's coming in the morning? Anybody know? What's coming in the morning? Weeping may endure for a night, but something is coming in the morning. It's gonna come. Look at here. That's my daughter. That's the preacher's. That's the preacher's daughter. She knew that. Thank you, precious. Weeping may endure for a night. God said to weep. He told you to weep. But something is coming in the morning. Oh, I can't find it. God be, God be two more amens out there somewhere. Don't try to take everybody in the cocoon with you. Because their development might not be the same as yours. I'm preaching to somebody out here. Their development in that cocoon, maybe that's a little different from yours, don't you know? It might be different. See that monarchy? You can't take everybody in the cocoon because when you come out, 
You ain't gonna be no caterpillar no more, Monica. Kid, you ain't gonna be no caterpillar. What happens? Cocoon. Cocoon is what the caterpillar goes into and he develop into something else and be able to fly. Think about it. Don't get discouraged because you ain't flying yet. Don't compare. The Bible says don't compare yourself by other people's progress. Do that. When God brings you to that place. You get ready to come out of that cocoon. And he said, okay, so now it's time for you to come out of this cocoon. Now watch this. Watch this another thing about it. There's a difference between a moth and a butterfly. There's a difference between a moth and a butterfly. If you ever looked at a moth, he fly. They got a lot of moths out here. They fly around the light at nighttime out here. Sometimes there'd be so many moths around our, our light in the front. You have to fan them to get them out the way because they'll get in the house, be inside of the lamp. They like the light now. They do. They're attracted by the light. You don't, you don't see them flying in the daytime. And another thing about a moth, they're not that pretty to look at. Oh, I can't get nobody to see this. They ain't that really that pretty to look at. And they like flying around at nighttime. Okay. Then you may have some moths that love to eat your holes in your t-shirt and holes in your socks. Yeah, they're real ugly. And they can get so bad that you gotta use mothballs. The problem with mothballs is, is they, it makes a strange smell. Butterflies, you don't have to use mothballs on them. And out here in the desert, we get, we get moths. They don't have no color. Just a tan color, no decoration, no nothing. And they fly side to side like this. So when you're trying to kill them, they're hard to kill. Mm -hmm. They don't make cocoons. Mm. Not really. And some of you all are not moths. You're not. You are being developed to be a beautiful butterfly. Oh, I can have, let me find it. Where's that amen I had the other day? I'm You're being developed into a beautiful butterfly. Now notice now, Joel 1 and 4, the very last one mentioned, Monica, the very last one mentioned Watch this, the pommel worm, he ate all of the stuff he could, but he left something behind, okay? The locust, boy, they'll eat everything, boy, they'll, they'll, they'll eat, they'll, those guys are greedy, but they left, they didn't eat it all, they left something behind. Canker worm, that's stinky, stinky, stink. If you ever smell a canker spoon, it's like, I don't want to put that in my mouth because it stinks. But they left something behind, okay? And the last one, the last one on the list was the caterpillar. <laughs> Watch this now. 
Well, let me show you. Let me show you something. Watch this now. Y'all can see this. Palmer worm. Palmer worm. He left something for you. Come on here, glasses. He left something for you. Right? Inside of that cocoon, he left something for you. Put a little color on there. Hold on a second. He left something for you. I hope somebody listening. I hope they y'all listen. He left something. He left something. Because God told him to. He told him. Leave something behind. El Senor! How you doing? He left something for you, El Senor. He left something for you. The palmer worm. See? Palmer worm. Which means that the palmer worm represents the palm of your hand and he had touched something. He grabbed something of yours and he thought he was going to eat it all up. But God said, uh-uh. You got the palm of your hand on stuff that belonged to El Senor and the Andrea. How dare you? So God squeezed him and he had to drop some of that stuff off. I'm preaching good to somebody, Esther. How you doing? Then the next one. The locust. Locust, boy, they'll eat you down to the blood almost. And some of y'all listening, you've been attacked to the point to where you almost had to lose your blood out of your body, but you kept right on going. Because God said, okay, I know it's painful. I know it hurts. But inside of that cocoon, it hurts. And God said, that blood... that was squeezed out of you, that pain, those lies, that financial thing that you went through. Look at here, Monica, that financial thing that you went through on somebody you know and squeezing you. I don't know if that's pink or, I don't know if that's pink or, or <laughs> I don't know if that's pink or red. Let me try another red here. Let me try that. Let me try to see if that's. Hold on a second here. I want to make sure I get some bright color here. Your brother Kelly, you're yeah, you you're saying red and that's pink, brother Kelly. Hold on a second. Algeria. Oh, I'm Miranda. How you doing? Make sure I ain't colorblind, don't you know? I'm putting red for pink and. So let me try this color. Ah, right, here we go. I think that's red. What do you think, Miranda? You think that's more red? Yeah. I think that's more red. There we go. All right. Squeeze you and squeeze you and hurt you and try to take stuff from you while you're inside of that cocoon being developed and the being squeezed to the point of blood coming out you and hurt you and lied on you and stole from you. Why are you in that cocoon being developed? Oh my goodness, depression hits you. Ooh, I wish I was talking to somebody here. Add the title. I didn't put the title up here tonight. I thought I did, but I have to go back so you don't do that. I thought for sure I put the title on there. Thank you, thank you. That squeezed you and hurt you and lied on you. And some of you even been hit with your fist. Now we in Colorado Springs. You talking about a cocoon. We in Colorado Springs, we had to do three sections, three different times of talking. <laughs> Maybe that's the New Yorker come out every now and then. We had to do three services. And so afterwards we had a line of people to pray for line of people to pray for and I, I love praying for people come on let's pray. Canada, let's pray. okay and you all can see me okay so we had a lot of line of people so i was talking about 
wives who have been really damaged by physically by their husbands. And so a lady came up to me and she said, Earthquake, get my husband over there in the corner. I said, oh, okay, okay. She said, Earthquake, he beat me this morning. What? He said, he, she said he beat me this morning hard in my head with his fist. Oh no. So I, I put my hand on her head and she had a big old knot right here on the side of her head. I mean, a big old knot, hard like this cup. I said, oh God, no. Oh man. Ooh. And he just sitting over there like a proud papa. I'm not. I mean, it was hard. He shit her. And he sitting over there like, mm-hmm, y'all did it. Mm -hmm. And it, and you could see, there's a white lady, white, white lady. And you could see she had long blonde hair. And I'm praying for her because I felt her pain. And then I'm not, man. Bro, man, come on, man. Why you have to hit? And they didn't come to church with her. And, and you socked her in the head. She got this big old knot. I'm like, boy, you beat her to the, to the. Man, that, that really hurt. That really hurt me, really. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, God. You talk about being in a cocoon. Some people live with people and they're in the cocoon with them. Maybe somebody hear what I'm saying. That relationship with a guy like that is being in a cocoon. There's a lot of reasons, Andrea, why they beat on women. I mean, a lot of reasons. But side of her, because he had that long blonde hair and so, so she can hide it. I said, may I pray for you? She said, yes. So I put my hand on the side of her head and I felt that big old knot. This side wasn't no knot, but this side was a big old knot. So she's living in a house. I'm talking to somebody here. I tell you to leave your husband. Don't you tell me that God said, earthquake said that God, I ain't say that. I did not say that. And don't you put that out that earthquake said anything. I do not tell people. Unless your life is in danger, you get to the police. Get to the police and somebody getting ready to kill you. Better get yourself with the quickness. And say you said back like earthquake. Earthquake ain't told you nothing except to get to the police and let them handle it. Cause that's a felony now. You can't beat people up no more like you used to. And get away with it. Smack on the wrist. Bad, bad boy. Bad. Go somewhere and sit down. You better not put your hands on people. Uh, you better not do that. Doing good. Thank you. Thank you, Deadpool. Thank you so much. So in the cocoon, some of y'all in a cocoon with situations, and you're in there, but you understand, it hurts, but God is developing. Uh, where my water at? God is developing you for something with wings that's going to fly. Jennifer, how are you doing? Thank you so much. God is going to develop you. The last one on this list, Jennifer, is the caterpillar. Because that's the one that all of this stuff was left to. Oh, somebody's getting this. Crystal, how are you doing? Crystal, that was everything. I'm going to read it again. We're in Joel. We're in Joel chapter 1 and verse 4. Look at here. Don't you know. That which the palmer worm, the first one, the palmer worm, okay, have left. The palmer worm was in there. He get eating up everything. He get gobbling it. He got belly full. He left some behind. He is left. I'm 
talking to somebody here. Just left it. Okay, just left it. Gone. You don't even know where he went. God don't even tell you where he went. He tell you he left, but he didn't even tell you where he went. Why he didn't tell you where he went? Because he don't want you to worry about that no more. I'm talking to somebody out here. He don't want you to worry about that no more. You know, you, when, when you worry, you have to volunteer yourself to worry. I'm pretty good to somebody. Amen, Andrea. That's part of the red part, the relationship in that in that cocoon. The next one, pommel worm, the locust. And you know the locust boy, there'd be trillions of them flying. Oh, no, Crystal. No, 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 no. We got to rebuke that. God going to bring you out. You're in that cocoon and you coming out. You watch and see. You know a monitor? A monitor butterfly can fly all the way from Canada all the way to Mexico and get down there and be hanging out by the billions in the trees all the way from Canada all the way to Mexico. Butterfly. Ain't about that big. I've seen them. About that big fly all the way. That's what you're going to be doing, Chris. You're going to fly into places. A lot of y'all listening to me right now. God is developing you inside of that cocoon. Don't you know? Did you hear what I'm saying, Monica? Crystal, you're being developed. Monarch, yeah, they fly long ways. Get down there. Meet out. Meet up with other butterflies. You don't see not one moth in the bunch. Cause they ain't, they ain't they. moths want your socks and your t-shirts. That's what they want. You gonna be okay though, daughter Esther. You gonna be okay in there. God gonna bring you out. You can get your wings to fly while you living. Uh, I guess I, I wish I could find an amen. I did maybe just uh, see if there's an amen on this paper. Let's see. Mm, no, I don't see amen on this paper. Thank you all. So after the locust is finished, then that will stinky canker worm. They turn your spoon stink. You ever smell a spoon? You ever smell a spoon that stinks? And then you 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 eat your cereal with a stinky spoon. Mm -hmm. It's like picking up a coin. Sometimes these coins, and your quarters, you see. See about the dime here. Sometimes it does, because that canker will get on them coins. It can get on your fingers. Yeah, we in, we in uh, Joel, Jennifer, we in Joel, chapter 1, and, and verse 4. That stinky thing. God do not want you in a cocoon with something Thinking. Oh my goodness. You don't. You don't. You don't. So what do you do? That stinky thing is fertilizer. You put fertilizer on stuff to help it grow. But you don't run around with fertilizer on you. Do you? Anybody out there running around with a cup full of fertilizer? Anybody out there? Come on. Anybody out there running around with a cup full of fertilizer? 
that stinks. Cow manure. Mm -mm. It's designed. Esther, my dear daughter, it's only designed to help stuff grow temporarily. Shark, how you doing? Temporarily. Mackenzie, how you doing? No, you don't run around with no handful of cow manure. No, you put that on your plant, fertilize it so it can germinate, help stuff to grow. But you don't go out there and rub it all on your clothes and on your head and, oh, it stinks. But its purpose is, its purpose is why you in there, why you being developed. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody out here tonight. Somebody listening to me tonight, don't you know? Come on here, cup. There we go. So why are you you in there? Why are you in that cocoon? You in that cocoon, shark? And sometimes people, the people want you to come out of that cocoon, and you you can't come out of there because you you're being developed. You don't want to prematurely come out of something that God is developing you. They be knocking on the door. Come out of there. God said, nope. Mm -mm. No. Come out of there. Come go to the party with me. Nope. Mm -mm. I done partied enough. I'm full. That old fertilizer. God, why would you, why would you put me in some... Why? Why would you do that? That's Monica. Angela, hey, I didn't see you. How you doing? My baby girl Cherish is on here tonight. Cherish, you still here? In that blackness. In that blackness, shark. In that time when it seemed like God ain't with you, seemed like things ain't the way it's supposed to be in that cocoon, that blackness. You there? Oh my God, thank you, Jesus. Cherish! When it seemed like in that blackness, you in that cocoon seemed like ain't nothing happening, everything seemed dark. Oh my goodness. In that darkness, in that blackness. Are you in there? Anybody ever felt like you're in a whole lot of darkness and blackness? Is y'all still there? Ever felt depressed? Ever felt hurt? Ever felt abandoned? Ever felt like everything is not going to be good for you? That's darkness and blackness of the cocoon. Look at here, shark. Look at here. Mackenzie, look at here. Look what look 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 what it says. Let's go to let's go and see what God has to say about that one. Come on, marker. That mark would go. Anyway. Because it'll come a time when book of Joel 1, 1 and 7. Watch this now. Watch this. Watch this, Monica. Watch this, Shark. 1, 7. Write this down. Joel 1, verse 7. Before their face, the people shall have much pain. Before your face, you're going to have much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. God is saying, no matter who you are, if you live in, it's going to come a time when things are going to look very black and dark. Jennifer, 
Joe 1 and 7. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. Got the wrong one. Wait, where am I at here? Joe 1, 2, no, no. A second, I'm sorry. Job, second chapter of Job. Job chapter 2, verse 7. Sorry about that. First, actually, let me get it right. Job chapter 2, verse 6. Okay. Yeah, 2 and 6. Not 1 and 7, 2 and 6. Before their faces, the people shall be much pain. It's going to come time. You're going, you're going to have to go through some pain. And it's going to look real dark. Why are you in that cocoon? Mm -hmm. But what God's going to do, he's going to send you, he's going to send you saying, come on, mouth, angelic, spiritually angelic, militant angels to help you. Ain't that good in your cocoon situation? Verse, look at here. Verse 7 of chapter 2 of Joel. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. This is what's going to happen to you. This is what God is doing while you're in that darkness. He's developing something good for you. Debbie, how you doing? My baby girl Cherish is on here. Say hi, Cherish. I love my big girl. Don't you know? <laughs> Somebody spoiled it too, but I ain't gonna say who spoiled it. Kathy, how you doing? They shall run. Joel 2 and, and, and 7. They shall run like mighty men. Okay, now, a mighty man means a strong military man that runs so hard you can hear his his footsteps as he hit the ground. That's a running mighty man right there. In this case, he's coming because God has sent him to fight for you. You ain't by yourself. Who told you you was by yourself? Who told you that? Who told you? No, Joel. J-O-E-L. J-O-E-L. Not Joe. J-O-E-L. Chapter 2. And now we're in verse 7. They shall climb the wall like men of war. This, this is real serious. And they shall march everyone on his ways, and they shall not break, break rank. You got military with you. While you're going through what you're going through, God has got a whole big military arsenal of angels while it protect you because when you in when you in that cocoon you don't know what's happening outside you don't know what's happening on the news you don't know what's happening anywhere because you're focusing on where god's getting ready to take you he said don't let your eyes look to the left or to the right focus straight ahead that's what god is trying to get us he's trying to get us to focus straight ahead on the things that he has for us and he's got while you're being developed in that cocoon, you got he's got things around you to protect you. You're not by yourself. Mm -mm, you're not by yourself. That's a lie of the devil. Tell you by yourself. Ain't nobody care about you. Don't go by there. They don't like you. You ain't by yourself. That's what that's what he's dealing with. He dealing with, he think he by himself, his crop fails. You know what they're doing, the canker worm and the palmer worm and all of these things. But what he's not realizing, here, yeah, that makes a nice sound. What he's not realizing is at the bottom of this scripture is a caterpillar. All that stuff that was, that was taken, they left some behind because God made them leave it behind. He made them made them and they're not going to break their rank in other words they're going to be marching up two three four marching around you non-stop while you inside of that cocoon you got look at here monica you got an army that won't break you in here no offense but there's no gomer piles in god's army get out of here i'll, I'll step that lady 
she went to to see her son march. To, went to see her son march. And he couldn't march like Gomer Powell. He was out of step. And that lady, being a good mother, being a good mother, that's good mothers do. She said, "Ain't that a shame? All these thousands of men out here marching, and my son is the only one that know how to march. Now he the only one who's out of step. But the mother, she's not gonna see her son, a real good mama." She's not gonna see her son out of step. She's gonna see you out of step, and her son is the one marching right up, two, three, four. Y'all get that later on when you get home. She see her son as the only one out of them thousands of soldiers, as the only one marching in step. So while you going through, while you going through, while you in that cocoon, you got soldiers around you. Joel 2 and 6 talks about before they face the people, shall have much pain. Now watch, now watch this now. Before your face, it ain't even, it ain't even touched you yet. It's just in your face. It's in your face. It ain't even touched you yet. It ain't even touched you. It's just in your face. You haven't pain of it, and it ain't touched you yet. And so because you're looking at it and saying, man, this is him, this is going to be horrible. It's going to bring darkness, blackness, and darkness to your mind, making you think of uh, depression. That's why a lot of people commit suicide. And I told YouTube, YouTube, y'all listening, I tell you, YouTube called me and they told me, they said, Earthquake, if you ever talking about suicide, tell the people to seek some help. And I promised them that I would, and I'm doing it right now. If you're thinking about suicide, and some people may be listening, and I promised the YouTube people that I would do this, seek some help. Get on the phone, call somebody. Don't sit in there and let the enemy mess with you. You in that cocoon, the enemy's going to try to do everything he can. everything he can to bring that darkness to you. But the best solution that I found from, out of suicide, his name is Jesus. And you too, couldn't say I couldn't say Jesus. Thank you. Now the other sites, I'm not on there that much because they told me I couldn't say Jesus, I couldn't say this, I couldn't say, I don't even go on there no more. You two have been very nice to me and let me say Jesus. The other ones won't even let you say Jesus anymore. Mm -hmm. Won't even let you say it. But you two have been very nice and I kept my word to them when I talk about suicide and I'm talking, tell the people, they told me real quick, if you say anything about suicide, just don't leave it blank. Leave the people, get, get on some phone numbers and call the, Every city has a suicide prevention line. Get on there and call. It ain't going to hurt you to call them. Amen, y'all. It's not going to hurt you. It's better to call them than not to call them. Just to try to figure it out by yourself. The enemy going to wear your brain out if you try to figure it out by yourself. Get on there and ask for some help. And the main best help that I found, his name is Jesus. Come on here, camera. Hey Amen, Andrea. I say his name. What was the next one here? Going back to Joel 1, 4. Go back to Joel 1 and 4. Let me get this right. Okay, Joel 1 and verse 4. And that which the canker worm. Remember we talked about those stinky worm, canker worm that get on your spoon? Now, I don't think they own a lot of spoons anymore. But if you if you get a spoon, an old spoon, and smell it, and it stinks, that's, that's a canker spoon. Will it kill you if you eat off of it? I, I don't think so. It might make you sick, though, but... I, I, I pass on that one. Put that spoon way back in the back of the drawer. Get another one that don't stink. 
if I ever come across a canker spoon, I'll bring it and let you let you see what it looks like. It's it's got it's got for real for real shark. It's got like a a, a burnt looking a metal uh, uh, what is the word? It looked like it's burnt on the side a little bit. And that's not that's not what somebody put it in the fire. That gets me the, that metal, that canker metal. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's a real it's a real thing called canker spoon, and canker worm. Now, and that which the caterpillar has left, I mean the canker worm has left. The caterpillar has eaten. So after all them boys is finished, look at that. After every one, the palmer worm, the locust, the canker worm, you're going to be the one in order to in order to get your wings as a butterfly, you're going to have to eat something. Oh, I'm preaching good to somebody out there. And you're going to eat the, the word of God. They're not eating it. God left it for you to eat so you can get your wings out of there. But it's going to come a time all of these things, the palm worm, the canker worm, and the other kind of worm, all of that stuff, all that stuff went in there. It sure did. It went in there with the caterpillar. All that stuff went in that cocoon with the caterpillar. And you thought all that stuff were killing, right? Mm -mm. Nope. It didn't kill him. It was for his development. You think some of that stuff you're going through would kill you? No, it's for your development. All things work together. Jennifer, Monica, all things work together. For those that love God and are called what? Are called what? According to his purpose. While you're in that cocoon, you're being developed. Because the cocoon, the cocoon is falling piece by piece. It's falling apart. Thank you. Come watch me. Hey, how you doing? The cocoon is loosening up. Mm -hmm. And you notice one thing about the cocoon? According to this, Joel 1 and 4, no matter how hard the wind blew. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Come watch me. No matter the rain came. Rain. He's in there. Lightning. Thunder. You're in there being developed. Oh, glory to God. You're in there being developed. Or at least, at least about three amens out there somewhere. You're in there, Jennifer, being developed. The Jennifer that went, oh, my goodness. Look at here. Look at here. The Jennifer and the Watch Me and the Thomas that went inside a cocoon, that went inside of the cocoon, it's not going to be the same one that come out. Let that stand guess for a few minutes. The one that went in there, the one that went in there, The one that went inside in that cocoon, that went in that cocoon, that went in there. Let me do this. Okay, there we go. The one that went in there, it's not going to be the same one that comes out. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't you know? Dude, the one that went in... The one that went in there, 
not going to be the horn that's coming out. Big time metamorphosis. How do you get a creature like this? To <laughs> little bitty stubby legs. About 20 little stubby legs. 20 little stubby legs. Why? Because you got to look at that scripture again. The cop, the, 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 look here. Let's go back to Joel. One and four. The Palmer worm left something. Now you, you, you add, you put it on the scale. All this stuff is, 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 it adds up microscopically because they're not as heavy as, as human stuff, but still it adds up. Joel one and four. The Palmer worm. He left something. Then the locusts, that's billions of them. Exactly. John, John Marquis. Exactly. Locusts now. He left a lot. He left. Canker, that was stinky canker one. He left something. And after all that, you notice now, it doesn't say the caterpillar left anything. Check it out. It doesn't say anything about the caterpillar leaving anything. Everything else was left for you to fly. Oh, come on now. Everything that's happened to you was given to you in the, in, in the process of this for you to eat off of this and take wings and fly. Oh, I could get a half a man out of that one. You're not, you're not being killed. You're not being kicked to the curb. This, this is feeding you. You're being fed. You're being fed. You ain't going to be like this all the time. You know some caterpillars? The birds won't even eat them. They can't digest them. He, ain't got no, he, ain't. He, he really don't even have any enemies. First off, birds that... Wait a minute. Mm -mm. They, they, they put him in their mouth. They spit him right out. <laughs> spit him right out. The enemy, the enemy knows that he cannot digest you. He wants you to think that you're defeated. He knows he's no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He knows he can't digest you. He wants you to think that, that you're being defeated. And all along, God is developing you to fly. This whole section down here, that's you down there. You're down there eating. Oh, glory to God. Look at Norma. Look, look. Norma. I'm talking to Norma. Norma haven't come on here. But God said there's a Norma listening. Norma, this for you, okay? For everybody else. Norma, this is God talking to you. You you all of that stuff was left behind. It's like a bank account. Oh, somebody hear what I'm saying. Norma, this is a bank account for, for y'all, Jennifer. This is a bank account. This is a spiritual account. All of that stuff that those other creatures left. For you to eat off of, for you to get real estate, for you to buy apartment buildings, for you to have a decent car. Decent cars. Oh, I guess everybody mad now. Brady Kelly, Brady Kelly. Oh, I'm Brother Kelly, nothing. All these things for you to have decent clothes. Now, you know, God does not want any of us to have to walk around with clothes with holes in them. Moths do that, not butterflies. Moth. I know I've been eating. Jennifer, I'm telling the truth. Moth. You ever see a moth? All he do is fly around the light. That's all he do. He don't do nothing with nothing else. Not even pretty. All he wears is one little crazy looking color. Trenton, how you doing? No, he got no no design, no nothing. He gets all eat holes in your your clothes. And the Bible says, "Be thou holy, 
as he is holy, he did not mean having no holes in all your clothes and shoes. Not the kind of holy he's talking about. That all them creatures left all of that stuff for you, for you, for you. And, and Norma, if she listening, God called out Norma tonight. And for Norma, Norma, if you listening, you, you're not going to have to deal with this bankruptcy stuff. Oh, man, God help me. I'm not going to perish. Anybody still with me? The pommel worm, the locust, the stinky canker worm left all of this stuff for you while you're in the cocoon being developed. And when you come out of there, oh, glory to God. When you come out of there, guarantee you won't look like this. Look here, Shark. I guarantee when they come out, Ooh, Cherish, when they come out, when my baby girl Cherish come out with God, God developing her, she's a powerful, she's a great speaker, she's a great preacher, she's pretty as all outdoors. Of course, you know, she look like a daddy, don't you know? But anyway, she got all of this stuff, and when she come out, did you all hear what I'm saying? When she comes out, when you come out, you're going to be able to fly in the light. Jennifer, you're going to be able to fly in the light. That is a beautiful moth. The biggest moth in the world I've ever seen. I travel the world. God bless me. It's called a mammoth moth there in Wisconsin. Big moth, bigger than my hand. Yeah, they do have some colorful moths. But we're not putting moths down. We're just making a point here that in comparison from a moth to a butterfly, I'd rather be a butterfly. I'd rather be the butterfly. Look at the word butter. Butter. Flying butter. <laughs> Flying butter. Mm -mm. You put some of that on your toast. I'm not just saying you put butterflies on your toast, but I'm saying this. Is it, it's going to be a transformation in, in your life. Jennifer, it's going to be a transformation. Crystal, going to be transformation. Thomas, transformation. So all of those other things, all of them other things. All them other things, all they did was built up a nest egg for the caterpillar to be developed. Palmer worm, <laughs> watch this now. Palmer worm. Not going to change. He gonna, he, he's going to be a worm. So he stopped living his little short life. He's, he's gonna be a worm. Grab it on the stuff with the palm of his little hand, but he can't hold on to it. What's the next one? Canker? Locust. He is going to die a locust. That's that's all. In two or three months of life, he started as a locust, and he's going to die as a locust. Some people, you trying to help them? Some people, you trying to help them with your whole heart, but some people, they don't want to change. You want more for them than they want for themselves sometimes. And you get frustrated because why you don't want to change? 
Why you don't want to move? Why you don't want to get out of this side of town? Why you always thinking that God won't bless you with a decent car? How come you won't try to go and get you a better education? They don't want that. I'm pretty good to somebody. Take that stone. And you love them with everything you, every fiber you have, you love them and you're supposed to, but some of them going to die a locust. Am I talking to somebody? Muhammad, how you doing? Muhammad, some people, they're going to die a locust. They don't want anything else. You try your best to love them. You give them every word of encouragement. You pull them and you grab them and you push and you pull and still they're still going to want to be a locust. Doing fine. Thanks for asking. They just want to be a locust. You see what I'm saying, Crystal? They just want to be a locust. They can do everything. Here, take the money. Here, here, take it. Here. I give you every penny I have. Come on. And they take your money and still don't change. Because you cannot buy a person, you cannot buy a person to change with your with your wallet if they don't want to change. If they're determined to stay a locust, they want to stay a locust. And no matter how hard you try. New York. I'm a New Yorker. Lived in Connecticut. In New York. That's where I'm from. But some people want to die. A locust. They're not going in the cocoon to men or more. They're not going in there. You want them. Same here. Thank you, Muhammad. You want them to change. But they don't like Nah, man. Nah, I don't want to change. I just want to go around and eat up stuff that somebody else has, has planted. That corn and that wheat. That's all I want. That's the point. But if you pray for them and their desire after you pray for them and they tell God, I don't want to change. They tell God. Some people... I've heard people say, he prayed for me all outdoors. I still don't want to change. But so you keep praying for him. Hopefully that one day they'll get the, the, the message. Look, you need to start thinking about something. Now you're starting to get older here. I don't want to change. I want to stay a locust. Per Cap, how you doing? Good to see you. Some people just want to stay a locust. They stay around people who are locusts like them. And you try to say, come on, man, there's other stuff to see. You got to go in and pray in this cocoon for a while and pray for a while. It's going to be hurting, pain, and stuff like that. But when you come out, I'm going to draw the, the butterfly in a few minutes here. But when you come out. This edges. Let me fix these edges right here. Oh, but when you come out, I'm talking to somebody out there, per cap. When you come out, ooh, 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 my God, when you come out, not if, but when you come out, I'm talking to somebody out there, per cap. When, not if, when you come out. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Get rid of these edges. When you come out. Somebody listening to me. You getting a hold of this real good because you're fixing to come. You're going to come out of there. And you're going to be sailing. You're going to go from Canada to Mexico like the monarchs do. You too. Jennifer, thank you. Coming out.
Yeah, I, I, I draw these things, Muhammad. I draw them. It's just a gift from God. I ain't, I ain't going to go to school. <laughs> but now, all them other things there. The palmer worm. 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 Palmer worm. He start out as a palmer worm. He's going to die as a palmer worm. Yeah. Going to die as a palmer worm. And you're trying your best. You do everything you do to get that person to change. They still want to drink that alcohol. They still want to smoke that weed. They still want to shoot that heroin. They still want to do that stuff because they just... God can... Look here. God can change them. He can change anything. If he changed me, I know he can change anything. He can change them, but their desire is, I want to stay this way. Why do you want to stay like that? I just like, I guess I like the way it makes me feel. Oh. Yeah, entertainment. Yeah, exactly. The Palmer worm left something for the locusts. The locusts left it for the canker worm. And the canker worm left it from you, left it for you. Left it for you. So you, now, everything left something for you. It's like an inheritance. Now, if grandpa leave you a big inheritance, right? He left you a nice little chunk of change, some money, right? He left it. And dad got a hold to it. And he knew how to invest, good investor. So now dad now left it for you. Look at here. He left it. There you go. My daughter, the preacher there. Now he left it. Now everything is in your hands now. Grandpa gone. Dad, unfortunately, now he's gone too. So now it's in your hands. Palmer worm, grandpa left some for you. Canker worm, locust, they ate all they could cook out of life. Now they left some for you. Now you're sitting up on this nest egg and you don't want to change. Up here, you don't want to change. So a lot of people win the lottery. They do, they win the lottery. Millions of dollars. Because they haven't changed up here. Their financial structure has changed, but up here they haven't. They haven't changed, they're still caterpillar. And they haven't changed from just wanting to be a caterpillar. So they be giving money here and giving money away there and giving and giving and and I'm and I'm for Jennifer, I'm for helping people that my baby girl daughter will tell you and she knows I'm most liberal. I'd love to give. But the thing is, if you're a caterpillar and you got billions and millions, but you don't change up here, you just giving money away, you're not keeping a track of stuff, you don't have anybody writing stuff down. For you, keeping a track of your taxes, your tithes, all of these things, what's happening, you are a caterpillar, and if you don't be careful, you're going to go broke. Because you're stuck as a caterpillar, and God is trying to, trying to take you. Look, keep a track of everything you do. Pay your taxes, pay your tithes. By all means, but keep a track of what you do so you don't go broke. But if you're just uh, passing through Caterpillar and you don't keep records of anything, you don't have an accountant, you don't have anything like a lot of these rappers. A lot of these rappers, they get a whole lot of money dropped on them. A whole lot of it. But they don't keep a good account of a lot of stuff. And a lot of them die 25, 16, 17 years old, dead, and have all this money left over for somebody to fight over because they didn't get the caterpillar out of their brain. 
They make good music. Well, I don't know if it's good or not, but they make music and then they don't have the caterpillar mentality pulled out through Jesus Christ. So they stay a caterpillar with money. Mm -hmm. They become a caterpillar with money. I mean, not a caterpillar. I'm talking, they become a locust and a canker worm rat athlete. And they got all of this money. Their faces is on billboards, but they still got that locust mentality. And then they just be taken advantage of because they don't have the, 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 the upstairs there. And so what happens, many of them just be taken advantage of because they have that locust, they get stuff to get these nice cars and Maseratis and they get these Rolls Royces and all these kind of things. But in the background, many of them don't know how to handle all of that is because they never had butterfly wings. Never had them. Never. I'm pretty good somebody out here. Never had them. Muhammad, I do whatever I can do to help you. That's why I'm preaching these messages to try to get people out of those slumps. I didn't say slums, I said slump. See that, Jennifer? The, the mentality of some people, you think about it. You give a person whose who's mental capacity never had anything, and then you give them something, you drop it on them, but they're still stuck. Still stuck. Either a palm of worm, palm of worm. In the palm of their hands, there is a worm that is eating up everything from them. And they think that they have accumulated something by buying a Maserati or one of those kind of cars. But yet they never, they never learned how to take the palm of their hand and really invest, really come out because they're busy making money. They're making millions and millions, but many of them never. I see them down, I live in California, but every now and then you'll see one of them standing in Beverly Hills, throwing away hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollar bills. And so one of the gentlemen, which happened to be of Caucasian, he said, why are you throwing hundred dollar bills here in Beverly Hills? We don't need your money. Go over there where the money is needed. In South Central and Compton and all those places over there, take your money over there and give it to them. But because his mind said, his palm of worm, that in his palm of his hand, he's got the power to give up, but not realizing you got worms in there that need to be dealt with. I hope I'm talking to somebody out there, Monica. These young men, they need someone to sit with them and show them. You see what I'm saying from Carson? Oh, yeah, Carson, that's a good place. Got a lot of friends over there. They need to be taught. Jesus is the best teacher that ever has been. But they don't have, if they don't have Jesus, they're going to remain what? A locust. Oh, I wish I could get another man, amen out there somewhere. There, you're welcome. You're welcome, Muhammad. We're here to help. God doesn't want even Muhammad. If he's in a if if he's in a palmer worm, that stuff get in your hands, and you don't know how to palm it and keep it, then the enemy is going to take that from Muhammad. Oh, I wish I could get amen out there somewhere. You can do better if you know how to handle what God is placing in your hand. 
Once you touch it with the palm of your hand, it should be yours, and it should be yours to use the way God said. But a lot of these guys, they touch these big rolls and stacks and stacks and stacks of money, but they got it in their hand, but not in their mind. It's most embarrassing, Monica. Just because you got something in the palm of your hand, but you don't futuristically know what to do with it. And you get there with those money shooting, you push the button and all them $100 bills come out of that machine. I don't know what that machine is, the little game and thing is called. But the $100 bills, a black brother and a Caucasian told him, what you doing over here in Beverly Hills shooting these $100 bills? We don't need a penny of it over here. Go over there where it's needed and shoot them $100 bills out. But because not being taught, first of all, somebody should have told him, look, man, keep that money, invest it. Pay your tithes and your offering, invest it, put some away. What are you doing out here in the middle of Beverly Hills out here? shooting $100 bills in the air and the wind is blowing them everywhere and we don't need a penny of it over. I saw it with my own eyes. I'm from California. I don't tell everybody everything I see. I'm from California. I saw it with my own eyes. I didn't pick up any of it. I'm going to sit back and watching this stuff because the university, he's not dealing He's not dealing with a caterpillar mentality. He's dealing with locusts. Just because you got a million dollars, it don't mean that you're in the right category with God. You got to get out of that and let God tell you, look, you need to, you need to be developed. Put your money, invest it, do what you're supposed to do with it. But get with Jesus and let him pull you inside of the cocoon with him. I guarantee you get in that cocoon with Jesus. You won't be them no, no million dollars throwing money out to rich people. And people say, what's wrong with him? No, don't fuss at him. Don't, don't, don't curse him out. Don't curse the young guys out. They only can do based on what they were taught. And when now they got all this money and they don't know how to manage it. So what they do, they get out there and shoot it to Beverly Hills people. And I've got friends in Beverly Hills that say, we don't need that money earthquake. We don't need that money. We got millions. Go with the need because what's happening, they don't understand. Look, the millions is, that's not how you do money. So you got it, but you don't know how to handle it. That's why you got that money shooting out machine doing that. I'm preaching to somebody. I'm not trying to make friends or enemies. I'm just trying to tell you, if you get with Jesus, he'll put you in the cocoon. He'll let you get past all of this blood stuff because a lot of the guys doing this, they've been in gangs. They've been in, they know what blood is. They had guys that, that die in their arms. I had a friend of mine die in my arms. I know what it's like to have people die in your arms. In New, New York, where I used to live, I know what it's like to see people shooting heroin. I know what I've been around tons and tons and tons of money to the point that we didn't even count the dollar bills we threw them in the corner. So I understand the, the street life. But I understand you, you, the older gentlemen, listen to me, the older gentlemen that was in the game taught us younger guys how to handle money. They taught us. Never sit with your back to the door in New York. Never pull your wallet out. When I teach my sons, don't put your money. Don't never pull your wallet out in, the, in public. Don't ever let nobody see what you have. Train these young men how to do stuff. They're out there with no leadership many times. That's why they in Beverly Hills shooting $100 bills with that money machine because they haven't been taught what to do. You don't do that with money. You don't do that. You need to be saved and put in a place in that cocoon with Jesus. That's what happened to me. I'm glad he took me in there. I was struggling as a little caterpillar, but I ain't struggling like that now. Some of y'all listening to me, you you struggling, but here's a good thing. It's God going to take you. 
He's going to take you and put you in there. And he's, and he's going to let everything fall <clears throat> with interest per cap, with interest. For interest. Palmer worm, he dropping stuff in there. The locusts dropping stuff in there. Where you located, Muhammad? What where you you're in India or you're in America? Try to help you if we can. That's what I, that's what ministry does. We try to help out. See? Got to be taught these things. Okay. Maybe we could talk. We have a WhatsApp number. I got to get, I don't know it by heart. But we'll get that. We can talk on WhatsApp. Maybe we can help you. Palmer worm. Okay. Canker worm. Stinks. It stinks. Do you know standing in Beverly Hills with a money gun? You know that money gun thing? Kicking out 24. Okay, good age. Kicking out $100 bills, done the stacks of them. And the rich guy's telling you to get out of our community. We don't need that money. We got millions over here. Go where the need is. The people are needed. You're welcome, Muhammad. We do whatever we can do to help you. I have a WhatsApp number. Y'all see what I'm saying? God doesn't want us to not know this. He doesn't. He does not want us not to know this information. Mm. All that stuff built up for you. Everybody listening built up for you. So you can come out. You can come out. You can come out of it. You can come out of this. Beautiful. I mean, just beautiful. You can. You can come out. God will teach you. He will. He'll take you under his wings. He'll tell you, young man, get from over on this side of town throwing $100 bills in the wind. Get from over here. God, he will teach you, young man. He will show you. He will. Get from over here. What are you doing? He told you, get out of here. Mm-hmm. That man said, what are you doing over here in our neighborhood? We don't need your money. Go where the need is greater. God will show you where you need to be. So when you come out of that cocoon, when you come out of that cocoon, like the monarch, throwing your money away, what are you doing, man? God will show you. No, no, no. Throw them hundred dollars. What are you doing? You got some babies over on this side of town. He ain't got no diapers. Well, that's a mama's fault. Well, she shouldn't have got pregnant out of wedlock. Hold on, bro. Hold on. You don't blame the baby for what the mama did. The baby needs. I'm. If I see a baby hungry, ask anybody know me. I don't care. I'm going to get diapers. I'm going to get clothes brand new. I, that's what our ministry does. Stop blaming the baby on what the mama did. Come on, man. You can't fly like that. Oh, glory to God. God trying to make a left. All that stuff for you. 
God don't want you poor, Muhammad. You ain't getting no pleasure out of you struggling. You a 20-something-year-old man and you're an able body. No, that's not his will for you to be struggling like that. Ain't got nothing. Ain't can't feed your family. I'm talking to somebody out here. God wants you to come out of that cocoon and sail. And sail. I want you to sail. Stop throwing that money away. Talking to y'all, rappers and stuff. Stop throwing that money away, man. The rich people don't need your money. God's trying to get you. Do you hear what I'm saying? God's trying to get you to understand what's right and what's wrong. That's wrong. Standing over there with a money machine, giving it to them billionaires over there. They don't need your money. The people that need your money is a place where you came from. That's what need the money. Because that man said, get from over here. We don't need your money here. Go back up. But see, if you were in the right state of mind, understanding what to do, you wouldn't be over there throwing out hundred dollar bills and they get they get and you know what? I saw the whole thing. They left the money on the street. The people didn't even pick up the money. Them rich folks didn't even take a dime, nothing. They just stood there and watched them. And I'm looking at it too. I'm like, oh my God, brother, somebody, somebody help these young men. God help us. God, please. Somebody. Somebody help these young men. The rich folks get stood there looking at them, shooting that money out of that machine, that gun machine thing. Get stood there looking at them like, Did nobody teach you how to do money? That's how they was looking at them. And I was, and being the same color with them, I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. Because they have that locust mentality. A locust is just gonna be a locust. He's not gonna be a butterfly, never. He never. Canker worm is just going to be a stinky worm. Stinks. That's all. That's all. And it's really bad. But God don't want you like that. If you add up all the money you shot out of that machine over there in Beverly Hills, that's what God wants us to be, per cap. If that man, that young man, a stack of hundred dollar bills, I watched the whole thing. If he would stop and realize, I came over here and shot out a hundred thousand dollars I shot out in the streets in a rich area, and they didn't take a dime of it. And I'm looking at it. And I'm like, palm. He had that in his palm. But that nasty worm. And I'm wrapping this up now. I'm going to pray for someone. He had that in his hand. Look at that $100,000. Could have went to something on the side of town that really needed it. But because in his, in his caterpillar, not caterpillar, in his palm of war in the palm, he had it in the palm of his hand, and he gave a hundred thousand dollars to people that get stood there and looked at it. We don't need this, but we need this. Thank you, naming Christ. Back in the day, before I became a Christian, they used to smoke. They used to light their stokies with hundred dollar bills. Follow what I'm saying. Come out of that lifestyle. So the money is not the issue. Wisdom and knowledge with money is the issue. 
The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You don't go over on that side of town over there and have a money machine shooting into them. They're going to tell you, are you nuts? But because you got the palm, palm worm eating up at your head, eating you and telling you to go over here to these rich people and shoot this out to them. And they're looking like you, like a, like you some kind of monkey or something. Yeah, I said it. Like you some kind of circus monkey or trained bear. To them, you just entertainment. And they sit back laughing at you. And they even touch the money. They have the street cleaning to come. And the people come and collect the money and give it to their charity. That's all. They don't need it. They'll give it to a charity. Uh -huh. I used to manage people, my wife and I. We had a management company in Beverly Hills and Hollywood called Manor Management Production. We used to have 20 different stars we managed. A lot of people don't know that because we don't brag and boast on stuff. We had movie stars. We had all kinds of actors, singers, comedians. We did a lot of stuff in Hollywood. Huh? We know a lot of people there. And we know the people sit back in the back and laugh at young people and call you all kinds of names because you you got stuff in the palm of your hands. Let God use the palm of your hands and stop letting these worms eat up your stuff. Stop shooting your money out to people that don't even need it. Let God make a butterfly out of you. Let somebody help you invest. Pay your tithes. Pay your taxes. Don't evade. Jesus said, don't you evade paying taxes. Pay your taxes. Pay your tithes. Give what belongs to God, to God, and give what Caesar's. It said, who should we pay? Jesus said, whose inscription is on that coin? Whose money is on that? Whose face is on that coin, Peter? He said, Caesar. He said, well, give what belongs to Caesar, what belongs to Caesar, and what belongs to God, give it to God. Pay your taxes. Pay your tithes. Get with somebody spiritually that say, fill with the Holy Ghost, that has show you, fellas, that's got all these millions. Get from over there shooting that money in the street to them rich folk. They just laughed at you. Just laughing at you. They don't even want the money. They take it and give it to their charity. Save the dark beetle or the the, the, the ponytail of a, a horse. And they don't, they, that's what they say. They, 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 all right, to their polo clubs and the, the, get what are you doing? But once God gets a hold to you, he'll show you where to go, what to do. So you can fly properly. You don't have to be scraping around. Nobody on there has to be scraping around because God made the palmer worm take his hands off of yours. He made them in. He made them get their palm off of your stuff. He made that. He made that. Oh, glory to God. He made that worm take his nasty hands off the palm. He twisted and squeezed the hand of that worm that's eating your stuff up to where he got to drop all your stuff down. That's why they were dropping stuff. That's why the palmer worm had he left something because God made him leave it. That's why the locust dropped stuff. He left something because God made him leave it. That nasty canker worm, God squeezed him. That's why your stuff, to the wealth of the wicked, is laid up. That's what he's talking about. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for you. And don't you, when God bless you, don't forget to, don't, oh my goodness. Don't forget to pay your tithes and your offering and help the needy. Don't, 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 don't my well, that pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Like somebody told me, I pull my, you pull yourself up earthquake the same way I pull my stuff up. All I was doing, I asked them to, you know, to talk to some people so I can minister. 
You know, let me tell you something. That person that refused to help me, I far surpassed their ministry. I'm years ahead of them. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Years, that person that didn't help me when I was suffering, when I was down, when I was in the cocoon and stuff like that, God brought me out of the cocoon and I'm flying everywhere. And to heat and, and Trinidad the other day, then came back, went to Colorado Springs, spoke over there. Jennifer, you know, we've been doing stuff and that same person that told me they wouldn't help me. I'm light years ahead of them. People don't even, even know who they are and they could have helped me. And in exchange, I would have helped them. But because their, their mentality was about palming stuff and keeping it all to themselves. Now God has taken me far above them. So far above them, they look like an ant. And I still love them. I'll still help them as God tells me. I'm talking to somebody, yeah. I dress her, how you doing? See, you don't know, you don't know who you kicking to the curb that God might be getting ready to use them. You have no idea who you just kicked to the curb and God said, okay, because you kicked them to the curb and you put your palm on them, that's all you're going to be is a worm, a palm, worm touching stuff and nothing hardly going to work. And you need to repent to God and repent to that person that you could have helped, but you didn't do it because you, you was on TV a couple of times and, and which is fine. That's great. God bless you. But when you hurt people on purpose, it stinks. You're a canker worm. I'm preaching good to somebody, Katura. How you doing? Don't hurt people because you got the power. Don't do that. You'll become a stinky canker worm. And what God is doing for that person, he's developing. As we get ready to pray, he's developing all of this down there for them. All of this pain, all of that bloodshed, like the lady that got hit her in the head in Colorado Springs. And that knot, man, this guy, phew, this guy left a knot but so hard on her head as I laid my hands there. That's oh my God. Man. Some people you dealing, you listening to me, and you dealing with bloodshed right now. But you in that cocoon with all of that bleeding, and God said, when I bring you out. You're going to be fine. Oh, I wish I could get an amen out there somewhere. You're going to be fine. So, Father, we thank you. We bless you tonight, God. We honor you and we praise you for bringing us to all of that stuff. And to the cocoon, we thank you. We thank you, God, for Joel chapter 1 and 2. All of those things that happened to us growing up, it's just making us a bigger and better butterfly. Like the monarch butterfly I flew all the way from Canada, all the way down to Mexico. And then turn around, some of them try to fly back. I don't know if they make it or not, but they try to fly. At least they make it one way. So some of them listening to me right now, God, you are making big butterflies out of them. So they don't know what to do with their finances when, when, not if, but when you give it to us, we'll know what to do with it. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Help Muhammad. Help him, God. It's a young man. He needs you. He needs you. And if we can help any kind of way, God, be more than happy to help any way you tell us to. We don't turn people away. No matter what their name is, we help everybody, love everybody. So thank you tonight as people waking up and some going to sleep. Bless now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. 
All right, God bless y'all. We do have cash app. Finance has been really slow, really. We have cash app, dollar sign, Earthquake Kelly. Kelly spelled K-E-L-L-E-Y. Dollar sign, Earthquake Kelly. We have uh, PayPal, EarthquakeKellyMinistries.com. Love you, Cherish. Thanks for staying on with me for a while. Tell Paradise I love her and... Um, Oh, the girl's name begins with an A. What's her name? How do I get my WhatsApp? What, oh, my goodness. How do I do that? Uh, what's my WhatsApp? Um, I think it's Earthquake Kelly. Look on there. Look on there, and you'll see Earthquake Kelly WhatsApp. Name in Christ. We need it. We need the help. We give out a lot of information, and sometimes we, if we we get two or three people, maybe a week may help us. You know, it'd be nice if more people would would help us, so we can help people like Muhammad and people like that. We don't mind giving, but it's be a nice blessing if people would help us. Dollar sign earthquake Kelly, and I know there's people out there. Some of you got deep pockets, but you're not in deep into giving. Yeah, you've been blessed financially. Now, you don't have no money gun out there shooting and not money in Beverly Hills. You know, them people don't need your money out there. Seriously. I got a lot of friends about there. They don't need your money. They really don't. They're looking at you laughing. Don't they? Ask God to help you, to help you so you can fly properly. Amen. Be the butterfly God wants you to be. Ask him. He'll show you where to get the money to. Amen. Yeah, Earthquake Kelly and What's Up? And we can talk on there. Yeah. Look at Earthquake Kelly and What's Up? We're more than happy. All right, y'all. Thank you all for coming on. Don't forget, God trying to make butterflies out of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we we are. Now, thank you. Thank you, Percat. We are now in the ministry, back in ministry. We're starting out with every every Tuesday evening. Not this, not this Tuesday, but watch the calendar. Still got January on there. Not this Tuesday, but uh, two Tuesday nights from now. Two weeks from now, we are going. Gina, how you doing? Two Tuesday nights from now, we'll be at 40, 4, 4, 5. I think it's East. Thank you, Sister Henry. Thank you so much. Father, bless the Henry family. Continue to pour out your blessing upon them. God, that you know what they need. You know where to take them to. And God, they're going to be flying like butterflies. No more palms. They don't need nobody put no palm reading on them, them nasty worms. They don't need anything. They don't need that stinky canker worm. God, they want What's good silver in their mouth, God, to eat off, or even gold. So bless them now, God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Well, you give me a call on what's what's up, Earthquake Kelly, and I'll talk to you. Amen. So thank you all that, that, that want to help this ministry now. No more palm worms. No more of that. You don't need that. As I get ready to go, you don't, you don't need no more palm worms. You don't need nobody put the palm of their hands and their nasty worms on your stuff. Love you too, name in Christ. We don't need nobody else. Now that we know this thing, none of these palm people put their hands on none of your stuff. That's why you're having a problem, because you got the people that ain't supposed to. Thank you, Cherish. My daughter says my WhatsApp is Earthquake Kelly. Thank you, sweetie. Love you. So anybody want to contact me on, on WhatsApp, WhatsApp, well, not WhatsApp, but WhatsApp, it's just my name, Earthquake Kelly. Thank you so much, Cherish. 
So tell Paradise I and Anika. Tell I love her. Paradise. Those are my daughters and goddaughters. I love them. They are so special. Thank you, Rochelle. Father, bless Rochelle right now for helping this ministry. Open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing upon her and her family. In the mighty name of Jesus, take that palm worms from off of her. Don't let no worms touch her. Any kind, no palm, nobody's hand in her business touching stuff that belongs to her. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you, Katura. Uh, yeah, thanks. I hope I said it right. Thank you so much. All right. God going to get all these palm worms off. You watch, see, watch how free you be once God moved this. Thank you, Muhammad. Thank you so much. Well, you know what this means. Studio Lights is out. Earthquake. He gone. He fishing to get up out of here. <laughs> Love you all. Got to get up to a little nap. Got to go to church in the morning, don't you know? All right, y'all. See you. Love you all. Bye for now.